move move on quickly here. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, as I was saying, really just at the at the beginning there, it's uh, it's nice to be talking about a physical product for a, for a change and, and looking maybe forward to, to some of the things that we might we might do in the in the physical world. But just as we get started, uh, this is a, a product we use a lot called Images of Organizations. And it got me thinking of the, the types of team working and team building questions that we get asked. So I just wonder as, as we're waiting uh, for a couple of people to join and, and welcome Kathy, uh, is there an image there? And just stick a, a message in chat, if you will, that reminds you of, a, of, of what is a typical team building or a team development challenge you've been asked to deliver? You know, how is it? Kind of described by the by the client. If there's an image there, if there's not, just put a maybe a, a short description in the uh, in the chat box. Uh, just as we're doing that, my colleague Kim, who's with me in the background, uh, is going to be picking up any kind of chat questions as we as we go along. So welcome, Kathy. Uh, we're just about we've just decided to kick off. There's a a number of people, uh, additional people that may may come through. Uh, and as I was saying there, uh, just as a way to, to get started, if, uh, if you could maybe just pop something in the chat about, you know, what is a typical team building or team development request that you get asked to deliver? How do, how do clients tend to describe this uh, in your business? So uh, Kathy's got a number 12. Okay. So doing, doing lots of things. Anytime I, I do this with a bunch of trainers, and ask them uh, about, you know, what do these images remind you of? Uh, all trainers seem to pick uh, number 12. That, that seems to be one of those jobs where you're always doing several things. So uh, Lalazar's got teams pulling in di different directions, that type of image in three. Yep, we get that. Yeah. So away days, Cathy, yeah, yeah. Off sites, that, that type of thing. Number 12 from Jim. So again, the, uh, the kind of doing lots of things. <laughs> And, uh, and Marcus has got number 11. It's, it's always interesting for me when people describe number 11s because some people will say things like, we're asked to do things with inadequate tools, you know, and then other people will say, well, we're just striving to be the best that we can be and trying to reach the moon. And it's amazing how you can look at a picture and get two very, very different uh, uh, thoughts from it. But that's good. That's, that kind of fits with, uh, with what I'm going to talk about. So that, that's useful. So let me move, uh, move forward quickly. So we've got a maximum of about an hour and a half. I'm certainly not going to be uh, any longer and probably will be a little bit quicker as we've got a, a smaller live group. And for those watching uh, later on, then if you have questions, then please send them in. Uh, those of you live, just open your mic or send a, a question in, in chat and Kim can, can pick it up. So we're gonna do a quick introduction to what this is about, why we designed it a little bit overview of some of the features and then we're going to touch on some of the activities because I think it's important that you get a sense of what types of activities they are and so you can work out whether some of those applications uh, and requests from clients that you just mentioned might, might fit. Uh, so you can find them on the website and again Kim will follow up with these uh, links. So there's a UK and international site in Sterling and there's a, a US uh, site for, for dollars. So again, the important thing is this is a physical kit. That little orange bag is what you will receive. And uh, if you buy Teamwork Web, so we're not talking about online uh, products here, but again, we can maybe talk about how some of this might be able to be done uh, with, uh, with hybrid groups, maybe as we go towards the end. So some of the, the common team building and team development objectives we've, we've, we get talked about, sometimes it's just about fun and getting to know colleagues better. I'm quite lucky we have the, the same people in our business that we started the pandemic with, but I know lots of people have joined organizations and never met their colleagues, only ever seen them in the screen. So I think there is a desire to, to get people together. If you get to know people uh, better, then there's no doubt that you can work better as, as teams. Uh, sometimes it's about giving participants uh, the opportunity to work in tasks, interest and motivate them. So this idea of, of maybe building skills, but also just uh, letting them uh, have some, some fun. Sometimes it's about modeling important behaviors or building skills. So get teams to work on certain types of activities uh, in a different way to help build skills. Uh, sometimes it's about functional project teams working on different tasks and then how they come together. 
and integrating sub teams can be really important and we'll certainly see some of that in, in, in this. And then if you really go into the, the far end of, of learning, sometimes it's about looking at very specific issues, maybe in smaller teams like power and authority, roles, value, competition, trust, all of these things which really need to be addressed when you're building particularly high performance teams. So the way that we looked at designing Teamwork Web is that uh, it has 30 uh, different tasks. So I'm going to assume for the first part of this presentation that we have a kind of ideal number of 30 people. So that's what this activity was designed for, up to 30, uh, 30 people. So you'll see that there are some tasks which are for individuals and pairs. You know, we do have a specialist subject matter expertise, that type of thing, where people are working as individuals. There are some small team groups, and then there's three or four where the group size that uh, addresses the task is, is up to the, the learner. And you'll see a lot of this in, in Teamwork Web, and those of you who know some of our products will recognize that when we're working experientially, we really want to give the learner as much control as possible. And that's true in this uh, exercise over that, that period, which can be you know as, as long as three hours. Lots of different areas to, to look at. So if you're really looking at this through a learning focus, lots of uh, opportunities for leadership and followership, lots of opportunities, of course, for team working and then different types of, of, of specific skills. So uh, there are tasks that many participants can choose. Uh, and I've added that, that many of them fun because I always think it's interesting when you talk to people about experiential learning, because some people will say, well, Team building is about having fun, but my idea of fun might be quite different from, from yours. You know, uh, If you asked me to participate in an improv play, being an introverted engineer, I would run a mile. But if you asked me to sit down and do some puzzles for 30 minutes, I might find that quite fun. So uh, I, I'm always careful about using the fun when we're talking about uh, the word fun when we're talking about uh, team working. The other thing you'll see though, is that we do try to have these tasks completed to quality and time constraints and with limited access to resources, because in the vast majority of organizations, these are real life issues. You know, you don't have unlimited time. You don't have the ability to do it just to, to be good enough. It sometimes has to be good enough for your, your customer. And usually there's, there's a whole range of, of constraints. Uh, on a practical point of view, though, uh, it's important that uh, these days or when we get back to flying soon, that things are easily carried about for those of us who have to travel a lot to, to deliver team building programs. So this is actually a kind of hold all size that would fit in a, a, an overhead container. It's not a, a big large wheel container, uh, just when you're talking about practicalities. So let's move to an overview of, of the design. Essentially, it's a three-part large group challenge, okay? Designed to last up to three hours. And again, we can talk about how you might want to flex time and, and numbers. Uh, and if you have a, an urgent question, please do open the mic or, or, or send it in chat. But it's linked to an overall group objective, okay? So we start off in teams and then we move to a whole group of, of objective, which usually for organizations is, is quite important. Uh, and the first stage, what we really do is force a little bit of, of planning on the group. So we give them 15 minutes. We give them a, a view of the overall brief, which I'm going to show in a second, and 29 different uh, task sheets. So these are little laminated uh, A5 sheets or uh, postcard sheets that we, we give to people. So here is the brief. So if you imagine that you're you know, part of this group of 30 people, uh, hopefully you can all read that on the screen. I'm not going to read it out, but I would ask you just to take a little bit of, of a read through the brief and then maybe just let me know if, if you are reading this, what kind of questions you might have. So uh, Teamwork West, have a look at the brief, resources and locations and timing.
So hopefully you're getting a, a kind of understanding as, as people would. So there's going to be lots to go on. There's some things that you don't know, like you don't haven't seen the physical materials yet. You're not sure what this phase two is. You're not sure where the resources or locations are. Uh, the facilitator, uh, facilitator has given you a time, so you've got some idea of, of, of what's going on. So this is how we set the scene uh, initially. We're then uh, giving people individual task description sheets. So this is an example from the facilitator guide about each of those. This happens to be the first 20 tasks. So the names won't mean anything. And uh, the people looking at this will get some kind of, of idea. So you might know what a wooden towers of Hanoi is. You'll probably know what a digital camera is, but other things that won't mean anything at, at this point. Uh, but they're starting to build up a picture of, of, of where they're going. Uh, the second part of the, the task is to actually get these completed. And as I mentioned earlier, each time something is completed, they get given something. And what they get given is a link from a product called Webmaster. Uh, you may, some of you may be aware of Webmaster. It's a standalone product in, it, in its own right. And there happen to be 29 colored rope links that are used in that. So we use these each time a, a task is completed, we hand someone a, a bit of the Webmaster. So they're starting to get some resources as they go through the activity, which builds to this final part. And the third part is everyone comes together, in this case, 30 people, uh, 29 of them have got a link each. The other person is probably leading it or got the, the brief and they have to complete the webmaster activity and that's 40 minutes in its own. So you go individual task to, to large group task and hopefully a nice finale at the end. The way webmaster works, it's got a time trial at the end and that gives a nice uh, finale to the, the three hours worth of, of activity. Again, don't worry too much if you're not familiar with, uh, with, with webmaster, but essentially, uh, they have some colored links. They go together in a certain way. If you look at the assembly guidelines down here, it says, oh, sorry, jumped ahead. Let me go back. Uh, a short rope will always connect to a long rope, a long to a short, an intermediate to an intermediate. And the most important thing is a color will match a color. Of course, we don't give them a color plan. We give them a black and white plan. So this exercise typically takes, if you remember, this is the last bit, maybe 20 minutes to do for the first time, and then they have to be able to build it in, in less than two minutes. So it's going to from one level of performance to a high performing team at the end of it. And that moves us through that kind of crescendo to a, to a good finish. So again, if you need to know more detail about Webmaster, we can cover that, that, that separately, but that essentially is a, the large single group task that we do at the end. So, uh, once, so once that time tile trigger has been completed and you know that can be done indoors or out, you happen to see a group just putting those ropes together for that time trial outside. You can then, if it's just for fun, maybe do a celebration or if you're moving into to learning review, you would start over that. So that's the broad uh, overview of how Teamwork Web is put together and the, the kind of constituent parts. Any questions at that point? I'm going to fill in a lot of this detail, so I'm just trying to, to, to set the scene for you just now. Great. So just a reminder of some of the constraints and challenges that are built into this design, because they may be important to, and you can flex some of this uh, as a facilitator, depending on, on what uh, kind of emphasis you want. The first thing is that the facilitator signs off on quality, and we recommend having two people. Now that's a constraint. You may have five or six activities going on at the same time. So pulling the facilitator in to sign off your activity takes a bit of internal negotiation with other team, takes a bit of management in terms of time, and of course how strict that facilitator is because some of the activities are a bit more subjective is largely up to you. So you know if I'm working with uh, those people in the nuclear industry, I'm probably wanting to be quite tight. If it's a fun day for a new group, I'm probably going to be a bit more relaxed. Uh, Secondly, is there are resources that are shared between activities. So uh, if you need a 30 meter rope, uh, uh, you, it can be in two places at one time. So you need to plan for activities you can do concurrently and those that can be run consecutively. So it's something for the group to, to think about. Some have fixed locations. And again, as a facilitator, if you've got lots of space, you can spread these out or you can have them, uh, for example, all, all indoors. Uh, some have answers, and I'll talk about that in a second, about how you can buy them if you don't have the answer. 
And uh, as I say, whatever plans they make in that first 15 minutes will change. And that's a deliberate design. And that, you know, if there's anything that has been uh, clear over the last 15 months for us during COVID is that planning has, has certainly changed and we've had to get used to making, uh, re-evaluating and changing plans. Uh, the final thing is everyone needs to take part and uh, we want some evidence of, of that and I'll show you how we do that uh, shortly. And uh, oh, the mouse seems to be going to sleep. Yeah, and uh, as I said earlier, some tasks can be improved by getting uh, everyone involved. So let's take a look at some of these individual activities and, and give you a sense of them. So uh, anyone come across this activity? We call it Towers of Time, but it's also sometimes known as, as Towers of Hanoi. Anyone familiar with that? Okay. So uh, the way I've set these up is on the right, you can see the task sheet. So that's a, a copy of what's provided. And this one says, it's one person. It's the kind of thing I mentioned that an introvert might be happy sitting at a desk for 10 or 15 minutes trying to sort out. And essentially what you've got to do is to work out that puzzle from the picture of moving those discs from one side to another. You can only move one disc at a time. You can only move one post at a time and uh, no disc may be placed upon a smaller one. So it's a bit of a, a, a cerebral puzzle. And it's the type of thing I think that's a bit like uh, the uh, admin tasks, you know, they're not, you know, once you've figured it out, there's not a lot of fun in it, but it still has to be completed in order to get your, your link. So that's uh, one example of a, of a puzzle type task. The second one in task two is uh, what we call team album. So we actually provide a, a digital camera with a with a, a, a memory card in it, even though we know most people carry smartphones these days. And what we're doing here is uh, making sure that uh, we have a record at the end of it, so you've got something to give the group and making sure that everyone is taking part. So you can see the task there is for someone over the next three hours to take a photograph of every member doing something, a whole team photograph at the end, and then a, a presentation to go through as, as a bit of a review. And uh, and the way we do that is just to, to provide the webmaster link, webmaster link once it started and then use the usually the celebration photo at the end as they complete it. So more of an artistic one, I, I guess, in, in task two. This is an example of a task that needs a location. So it's a, an outdoors one and it uses materials that are shared with another activity. Uh, uh, and uh, it's essentially about using those on the bottom right of the picture. You can see how we supply them. Those are about 30 centimeters squared. And it's about getting people across you know, an imaginary river or, or something. It's a fairly typical outdoor type type activity. Uh, needs a fair amount of people. So if you've got 30 people, you're talking about taking almost a third of them away. So again, needs to, to have a little bit of planning about where in the process you might, you might do that one. Uh, my word is another one that's out, outdoors. Some very simple materials with this. If you look bottom right, you've got a, a ball of string and a pen basically. And uh, this again shares uh, materials. It's not obvious this time, but it uses actually the same uh, rope area as one of the other ones. And what they have to do is, there's a roped off area with some paper in the middle, and they have to be able to write a, a five letter code word without entering that. So it's about manipulating that pen from, from the outside. So a bit of, bit of problem solving, a bit of physical, a bit of, of outdoor for, for the group. And again, a, a smallish task. Task five happens to use exactly the same, uh, some of the same materials. And it's quite deliberate. We've put a lot of the shared materials in this order because people will tend to just run through these in orders one to, to six and then find, you know, you can't really do them can consecutively. A uh, key punch is a standalone activity that uh, you, can, you can find on the website. And again, those that uh, have more details on the website, I'll get Kim to follow up with these later. But this is one of those activities that's about performance improvement. It looks like it's about physicality. You know, how quickly can you run across this and touch all of the, the, uh, the, the markers? But it's really not about that. It's about working smarter, not harder. And uh, again, there's a performance implementation stage. They have to do this in, in 30 seconds and, and get it signed off. Uh, one a little bit different, uh, back to the kind of engineer type. So this is an activity that might suit me, for example, uh, maximum of a couple of people, but takes a little bit of time. 
And what you're asking them to do is to build a bridge out of straw to span a gap of at least one and a half meters, usually between a couple of desks or, or tables. And uh, they have to prove that it can hold a weight which is supplied in a bag of marbles uh, for up to 10 seconds and show the facilitator. So again, no plans with this, completely free form. Uh, how they design it and how they use it is, is entirely uh, up to them. Uh, something that's a, a little uh, similar is a uh, coin sorter activity. Again, a creativity uh, thing. Again, some very simple materials supplied with some card, some sellotape, some blue tack and three coins. And they have to come up with a way of making a working principle of a coin sorter. So anyone got any ideas on if you had those materials, bits of card and coins, what kind of ideas does anyone have for how you might demonstrate something that would sort three coins of different sizes, denominations from, from each other? Just put some ideas in the chat for me. Have a think about it. Roll the card. Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember, you've got to sort them, Kathy. So how would you sort the big one from the small one from 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 the roll? Different size holes in a box. Yep. Yep. I think you're getting that. That well is that? Yeah. So there tends to be a couple of principles here. One is this idea of of shaking them, and the small ones go through the bigger holes, and then the bigger ones get held, and, and so on. Yeah, so the type of thing that would keep someone like me occupied for, a, for, for some time, I would suspect. So another outdoor one, another large group one. So moving into the area a bit more of, of, of trust, but also problem solving. So again, some of you may be familiar with this. So you have four people uh, lined up. Uh, they're given a blindfold and they have to sort uh, a single length of rope into uh, a complete square. Ah, Lalazar sort of just giving me the reason she knew that <laughs> one. <laughs> That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I always say all of our learners bring all their experiences with them and, and don't try to get them to forget them. So if your kids had a piggy bank that worked, use, use that. Uh, so, yeah, this is a fun activity, certainly, to watch. You probably want four people working and, and one uh, seeing how they get on as a, they're blindfolded. But this is, again, more difficult than, than it would, would appear. So this is task eight. Uh, I'm just going to do, I think, one, one more. Uh, so on the left here, you can see some little plastic pieces of different colors, the green, the blue, and, and the yellow. And on the right there, you can see the task that they're given. So if they can assemble to follow that pattern that says snub cube, you can actually fold that up into a ball and it becomes a, a three-dimensional structure. And for me, if I'm the facilitator, the evidence of success of that is I, I throw it up in the air and if it doesn't fall to bits, then uh, they get their, their sign off and they get their uh, webmaster the link. Uh, so again, more of a kind of, once you figure it out, it's more of an admin task that, that keeps going through the, through the, the order. So that's about a, a third of the, of the tasks I've, I've shown you. So again, let me have a go with you and, and see if we can, we can do one. So, uh, there's one here called, uh, I'm going to stop sharing actually just a second and put my, my camera back on. So I've got a couple of magnets here. So this is exactly the pieces that, that, that people would get. Okay, so you can see uh, magnets will clearly hold each other, but they also repel. So what I'd like you to do is again in chat, have a think about that principle about magnets actually repelling each other. So. Not the magnetism that keeps them together, but the magnetism that forces them apart. Give me an idea for a product that would rely on that principle of magnetic repulsion. Okay. So give me an idea. So we're more into the creative area here. What is a product that would rely on this principle of magnetic repulsion? Welcome, Sophie. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of just playing some of these activities. So, so just join, join in. And uh, we've got a recording of this going, so you'll, you'll get the bits that you missed at the start. So I'm just asking people to pop in a chat. Give me some ideas of a, of a product that you can imagine or that you know of that uses this principle of magnetic repulsion.
So do we have any any thoughts? Okay. Yep. I like that. Oh, is that a drawer that needs to stay open? Can't imagine what that dra drawer would be through though. So I find the facilitator. I'm saying, yep, you're on you're on the right road. But what would it be? An executive toy. Okay. Tell me more, Sophie. So what is what does the executive toy do? There's four balls on the strings, and you pull one outside, and then ah. you do, and they all knock. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure that's magnetic repulsion. I think that's just uh, transfer of momentum. But well, I, I'm not sure I'm an expert on that. <laughs> but you would be on the right way. <laughs> but that's a, it's a, it's about getting people to start to think differently. You know. So some we've done like the one I mentioned before might be admin step after step. Now you're giving them a, a totally different skill to to look at. Okay, that's fine. We'll move. Let's move on from from that one. So. Uh, Colour confusion. So this is a bit of, of, of fun. So this again is absolutely about getting people to move on to that right brain. Uh, anyone know what I'm about to show? <clears throat> Just uh, give me a volunteer then who's prepared to switch on their mic for me. I'll, I'll play. Great. Thank you, Alizar. So what I'd like you to do is you can see that those uh, those words so what i'd like you to read out and uh, give me a, give me as many lines as you can do i don't want the word i want the color that the word is written on so have a go oh god let's see okay blue red yellow green yellow green red yellow blue green yellow blue Green, yellow, red, blue. This is getting harder as I go down. I was to focus <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> um, blue, red, yellow, red. Ah, oh, no, green. <laughs> red, yes, red. Blue, green, red, yellow, blue, green, blue, yellow. Am I getting these right? You gotta tell you, me. No, it's okay. I'll stop you if you're wrong, but you're red, right so far. Red, yellow, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red, green, blue, yellow. Excellent. So that's about half of a card. So if you imagine there's two of you, you've got to be able to do that correctly without any errors in 60 seconds, and then you swap over and the other person does it. So uh, yeah, again, one of those things that looks a little bit easy, but it's 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 oh, a no, nice. No, it's not easy. No, it's not easy. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> we actually use this in our breakthrough thinking workshop because it's about you know the, the the challenge of of looking at something and trying to 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 make something different of it. It's actually really hard uh, once we're hardwired as humans to 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 read words and and not look at them. Uh, but that was great. And Thank you. And would they do this with the facilitator, like saying, okay, you did it, would they, or would they check each yeah, other? Yes, so uh, there's a little detail there that says each individual must do it correctly within 60 seconds. If you make an error, you begin again, and you've got to do it in a, in a shorter time. So you have to do it within 58 oh. seconds. So, okay. so the idea is uh, come prepared, you know. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, rather, rather than wait, uh, or, or rather than just go with the facilitator facilitator would be a high risk strategy okay. so again most of these so there's a little bit of, of strategic input in them usually as, as, as well great thanks Graham. no problem okay so let me uh, i'll show you another one so again we're into the kind of area of of puzzles and this one is a kind of alphabet uh, puzzle uh, again it's in english and some of the idioms are uh, a little bit english focused so if you're working with uh, multinational groups, they may need a little bit of help or indeed you could make your own. It's, it's not that, that difficult. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it up and again, just give me uh, either open your mic or give me in chat. So these are uh, alphabet puzzles. So if it said 12M of the Y, the phrase I'm looking for is 12 months of the year. So what would 26L of the A be? Any ideas? 26 letters of the alphabet. Well done, correct. 
Okay, so you can see, I think there's a probably about 10 or so you can see on, on, on the screen. Have a, have a look at them and just either shout out or stick in the chat if you can figure out what, what some of those might be. Fifty ways to leave your lover. Well done, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Someone knows their uh, Paul Simon tracks. Twelve signs of the zodiac. Mm -hmm. Good. So there's a couple of sporting related ones. There's a couple of. Uh... Oh, eighteen holes on a golf course. Yeah. Well done. Twenty-six miles in a marathon. Mm-hmm. You're doing well. You're on a roll here, Sophie. Something in a rugby union. Something. It is. Yeah. Eight forwards. Yeah. In a rugby, in a rugby union. union scrum. Correct. Wow. I know nothing. I know nothing about rugby. I just know words. <laughs> You're way ahead of me with that, even with the words. 20,000 20, leagues under the sea. Mm -hmm. I'm tempted to let you get these all now, Sophie. So at 16 would be 22 yards in a, it's got to be a football reference, no? Is it? Uh, 22Y is a, yes, That's it's, a, a it's a reference, but uh, the sport's on our side of the pond, Cathy. Yeah, okay. it's a cricket wicket. Yeah, okay. 22 yards okay. in a cricket wicket. <laughs> oh boy. So, so these, these, these definitely have an Anglo Anglophile <laughs> uh, link to them, but I'm sure you could do a, do a US version. One of the reasons I wanted to show you this is you'll see on, on, uh, on the right hand side, there's a little image of the counters. And it says information available to purchase. So you may buy the solution after 30 minutes of unsuccessful work. See facilitator for details. So some of these that have got an answer, again, you've got some budget that you can spend and we build that into the, to the activity. Uh, so on the facilitated materials, you'll see in the bottom there, the various activity numbers that you can buy and what it costs. So you can see in this one, task 16, the alphabet puzzle, you know, if there was one that you couldn't get, you could buy that last answer for 10 tokens. Uh, but the group has only issued 100 tokens in total. So again, they need to be careful. They can't buy all the answers. They need to, to think about how they, how they do that. But again, as a facilitator, you can have a little bit of, uh, of, of discretion in that. Uh, here's another one to, to, to think about. So again, we, we use this principle in our Breakthrough Thinking Workshop, which is about some people struggle to go, you know, completely right brain and completely out of the box. You know, for many people, building on an idea is, is a much easier way to, to, to do things. And uh, we, we look at these real life Breakthrough Thinking scenarios because I think it helps sometimes for people to see, well, how on earth did they get from that? So I've got a couple up for you and just let me know. If you know the answer, don't shout out because these do, but if you can, can think of it, let me know. So there's a couple here. So on the left, first of all, so when Colgate uh, lost the patent on their uh, toothpaste tube, uh, they wanted a way to stimulate sales and they did actually open it to a company-wide suggestion scheme. So what was this very simple idea that dramatically increased sales of their standard toothpaste product? And again, as we've said for the facilitator here, there is a right answer, but if you've got an equally creative solution that's possible, innovative and likely to see that would, and succeed, I would take it. So give me a couple of minutes just thinking about what that might be. Can I ask a question? Sure. Why did the end of the patent mean the sales of toothpaste began to decline? Uh, competition. So the other people were able to, to, to oh, make the same. Yeah. Their sales. Right. Their sales, yeah. Right. Yeah. Is this the one where they put the stripe in it? 
Uh, no, but tell me why you think that might have worked. Because it makes it pretty. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would, I would, if I was Lenny and Kathy, I might give you that one, but. <laughs> I was but I would, thinking standing the toothpaste tube upside down. So how would that, how would that be likely to succeed? Um, because users can now get more toothpaste out of it without like the, the, the difficulty, you know, how they have the upside down bottles. Sure. Yeah. I, I think they do it on purpose so that you can't get the last bit out and you've got to go and buy more, but I, I you're, you're, okay. you're in the right direction. Yeah. Easier to squeeze Marcus. Uh, could be. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably give you that. How would you make it easier to squeeze? Uh, by using a different shape, do the, uh, use a different form, uh, do the, uh, using a different uh, material. Yeah, okay. So this is one you could buy the answer to as well. Uh, anyone want to buy the answer? I like that, Kathy. she's going to stick with it. Nope. No, oh, okay. <laughs> keep guessing then, or keep creating ideas, I should say. If Keep it, inventing. If it was about easy to squeeze, and, and Marcus is right about a different material, would make it like the rolling up from the end thing, is it? So if it was metal, you can roll it up from the end, but presumably it was always metal. I can't even think what date this refers to. It could have been as early as the 50s or something. Yeah, I, I can't remember actually either, either Sophie. Uh... To, to be honest, I would probably have given you that if it, if it was if it was uh, the, the 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 end. Uh, the the answer was was they simply made the hole bigger that the toothpaste comes out because most people put the same length of uh -huh. toothpaste on the length of the of the. So if you make the hole bigger, more comes out and it empties quicker, and you have to refill it quicker. Uh, yeah. So Marcus oh. Marcus was the closest. Mar Marcus was very very yeah. close. What about number three there? That, that, this one fascinates me because I hadn't, hadn't heard of this before my, my colleague uh, wrote this one down. So in the in Vietnam conflict, they were Americans were destroying the bridges, but the Viet Cong rebuilt them and they weren't able to destroy them again. How did they do it? Again, I don't know if you happen to know the answer to this. Floating bridges. Sorry, I didn't hear that, Marcus. Floating bridges. Floating bridges? No, no. The pilots would still be able to, to bomb a, a floating bridge. Oh, if it's in pieces? Uh, well, they would have to be rebuilt. So they, they had, that was a problem. Bridge? It took too long to rebuild them. A drawbridge? Uh, possibly, but again, it would, might be hard to de describe. But uh, yeah, I think that's possible, Kathy. It can't be something to do with the fact they camouflage them by making them the same colour as the river. They'd still be able to, to get pick them up on sort of radar or something, wouldn't they? You're you're closer, Sophie. Actually, you're getting you're definitely getting warm. They painted them. They painted them. Uh, no, they didn't paint them, Kathy. No. Did they put them under the surface of the river? Absolutely. Oh. They put them six inches to a foot below the surface so that the trucks could start to drive across, but you couldn't see them from the air. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely oh. fascinating. <laughs> I, I actually went to Vietnam on a cycling holiday and, and I hadn't realised the roads are so, the rivers are so brown with, with mud that's natural that, you know, it's not clear. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see them, but it's my favourite one. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so there you go. That's uh, another uh, kind of breakthrough thinking one. And then maybe just a, just a final one. Uh, so again, we've got an estimate of five people. We've got five people here. So what you're trying to do here is to, uh, and normally you would have counters, but we'll just ignore this. Uh, I'm trying to get you guys to give me the full newspaper story from this headline, okay? And the headline is mystery death, man found dead from hypothermia in Midsummer Park Horror. And this is one you would need to have the facilitator come with you to do. So it essentially needs to be done live. And that's why probably the more people uh, in it, the, the, the better. 
so you can ask me any questions that I can answer with a yes, no. Let's do this for a couple of minutes and see if you can get close to the to the, the, the story. So just ask me a question that I can answer yes or no. Was he in an ice cream car? No. Was he in a body of water? No. Was he in a cave? No. Is it a human being? Yes. So my advice, ask as many questions as you can. There's no such thing as a stupid question in this activity. What, what were the first two questions? I got distracted momentarily, sorry. Uh, I what can't remember it? myself, I think. Was it, it was not in a cave? It not is in a, a cave man. and or not in, a body, in a body of water. water. It wasn't in water, it wasn't... No was, ice cream. Was he in a fridge? No. So not, a, not an ice cream van fridge or anything? No. It was um, a work, uh, the country was in the north somewhere? Uh, yes. Was it on, in uh, Alaska? No, not that far Ice north. Iceland? Iceland? No. I don't think the country would help. And actually, I can't remember which country it, it, it is, so not really was, relevant. Was it an abnormally um, freak weather event? No. no. Okay. Um, was there a zoo in this park? No. Well, maybe he got trapped it, in the penguins area. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is it like one of? Is it like that old tales of the unexpected, where the murder weapon was was the frozen leg of lamb, and then she put it in the oven? Is it something like a big block of ice? dropped on him and then <laughs> melted. <laughs> oh. I heard, I heard <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you're not far away, so Oh fair. God. So it has to be something with ice? Is it about ice? Uh, not about ice, but certainly about cold. It was hypothermia, so he did, he did die of, of cold. Is it something to do with air conditioning? No. Oh. I thought is that was some, a good one, Sophie. Yeah, is there a chemical <laughs> involved? Is there some kind of um some kind of substance no. involved? No substance no. involved. No. Is water in any form involved? No. I'll give you another couple it's of minutes. Is it a theme park? No. Is a ventilator involved? Is what so, a ventilator? No, Marcus. Is a vehicle of any kind involved? Yes. <laughs> uh. But what? <laughs> um. Was he in the air? Is an airplane involved? Yes. Ah. So he was high in air. Oh, it's that one. Hypothermia up there and fell into the ground. Correct. That's the answer. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a stowaway. Uh, it's actually a true story. Stowaway on an aircraft. And then uh, he fit, died of hypothermia in the air. And then when the plane was coming in to land and the uh, wheels came down, unfortunately, he, he fell and, and uh, landed in this, this park. So there you go. And the yeah, idea here is if yeah. you're the facilitator encouraging questions, you know, questions that elicit information, the more questions you can you can have the have the better. I felt like Hercule Poirot. <laughs> I, like, I gotta figure this out. <laughs> Great. So that's uh, I mean we probably run through about half of them, but you get a you get a sense of, of, of some of the of some of the activities and all of this would be going on. You know, with with different groups of people at the, at the same time, so it's a it's a fairly chaotic, certainly for that first, you know, probably uh, twenty minutes, half an hour, as as people try to figure out which task do they think they can do, which can they contribute to, which do they want to do, and and, and so on. So just moving on a, a little bit to uh, how they work from a kind of trainee and a facilitator point of view. 
So coming back to when you're flexing this, so remember we talked about this was for the ideal of, of maybe 30 people. So if you looked at all of these, there are seven which are around the artistic and creative nature. So I haven't covered these, but there's one where it's a solitary activity, draw a still life of something you can see, draw a picture of one of your uh, 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 teammates, uh, do something that's artistic in terms of drawing. So we supply a shaded pencils and a, and a pad. There's one which has no props at all. Can you make up a song that's relevant to your team and take four or five people to do it and perform it for the rest of the group? I certainly wouldn't be doing that one. Uh, there's one about enacting you know, famous movie scenes with whatever props you can get from your teammates and one about juggling. So there are some creative and artistic uh, things in there. Problem solving, innovative thinking, uh, puzzles, and then seven that are active and outdoors. So let's say you only had 20 people you would probably want to take 10 of those activities out. You can also take actually the middle section of, of, uh, of uh, a Webmaster out so that only does 20. So let's say you didn't have access to outdoor space then you could maybe look at removing those. So there's a number of ways you can flex this if you wanted it still to be as, as open uh, then you could just kind of remove some from, from each one. One of the interesting things sometimes is when you're working with teams, sometimes the objective is to move people out of their comfort zone. So if you're working, you know, maybe with an IT group and uh, engineers, you know, you might leave all of the artistic and creative ones in there just to, 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 to let them get stretched a, a little bit. So that's one way of, of looking at it. What I should say is that because this is what we call a power tool, it's a bit more complicated, a lot more in it as well as a normal facilitator guide that we provide with all of our products. There's a one hour uh, product coaching call that we would include. So when you get the materials, the first time you run it, probably me would sit down with you for an hour and say, what is the first time you're gonna use this? What is it you want to achieve? How should we set it up? So that's all included because I suspect, you know, you've, you've essentially got 30 different activities. They, we've given you a way to combine them, but they're all standalone that you could use in other things. So it's important you get really to, to understand them. What is really important is to, to think about planning the style of event and the facilitation and learning review requirements you want. You know, how much of this is going to be fun? How much are you leading to a particular outcome for this, for this group of people? Uh, staffing requirements. The more staff you have, the easier it can be for the group. The more limited staff you have, the more they have to engage you to get sign off of their activity. So that's something you really need to think about, about planning. You could plan all the locations. Uh, what I usually just do is have the four or five that need to be planned in a fixed location. Okay, you want to do my work task four, that's over there on the left. All of the rest of it, here is the materials, you guys figure out what, how and where you're going to, to do this. Uh, timing is really important. You know, you want to move that group through that first set of 29 tasks so that they get time to, to do the, the uh, webmaster because that's the one where everyone comes together. You've learned a bit more. Now you need to perform as a, almost an organization. So you really want to keep an eye on timings and, and push people through whatever timing you've allocated that for. Three hours, I have to say, is pretty tight. So I wouldn't try to do all 29, 30 activities, if you've only got two and a half hours, you need to take some out. You know, if you think about 30 activities and in, in, uh, in what have you got, 90 minutes for that first stage, it's not a lot of time. And uh, you do need to become familiar with the activity requirements and rules before you start. So there is a bit of, of learning there, uh, but most of them are relatively simple. As you can see, we've, we've just done about probably half of them. Uh, in the notes, you'll get this kind of level of detail. So for those that have to be set up, it'll tell you exactly where and how to do it. Uh, some suggestions, as I say, during the activity, you know, giving uh, task solutions and return to payment, what to do in the first few minutes. The answers, so that very first one I showed you, the towers of time, there's a very specific way you need to move the little disks on that peg. It will show you how to do it. And then if you want to go into reviews, we've got some suggested review questions as, as always, if we, if we want to do those. So uh, we've had a small group, which is fine. Uh, I've kind of really rattled through that. So we're almost at the, at the hour, uh, hopefully not too quickly for everyone, but I'm happy to take any kind of questions you've got about you know, what else you might do, how you might flex this, uh, any, other, any other thoughts on this. Uh, happy to, to take whatever. Whatever you've got for me. 
um, Grannis's Cafe, I'm gonna have to sign off, but I think what's really nice here is you could ask people to, to pick one that they think is speaking to their strengths and one that's a stretch. Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. The learning ability um, for dealing with frustration, emotional intelligence. Um, you could even maybe do it, you know, you do it by yourself, then you have to go find someone else to help you who has that strength and that whole piece of coaching or something. You could really build it out. You, you absolutely can. One of the ways I've used it, Kathy, is for those who are using, you know, introducing uh, profiling tools of any kind, you know, uh, thinking personality, you know, get people to, to find someone who's an opposite, find someone who's similar, you know, all of those types of, of things. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot you can do once you understand the, the type of activities. And I'm sure you could bring your own, you know, activities into it as well using that, that kind of principle. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for joining us you. if you got to, to head. I do. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye. Take care. Uh, Graham, you said you have the 29 exercises and you distribute to gain is for every exercise one piece of rope for the uh, webmaster. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you take exercises out, you have to assign to some exit. Do, do you assign points to exercises? Or do you say for this exercise you, get, you gain two ropes or something? Yeah, there's a couple of ways to do it, I think. So, uh, yeah, you could uh, have, you know, for those that you think are more challenging, you could give them more uh, opportunity and give them, you know, the chance to end, have two. You could still just give them one and then give them at the end. Uh, as you probably know, you can take uh, the centre section out of Webmaster. So mm -hmm. there's it's three sections, which is 29 ropes. If you use the two ends, it becomes 20. So if you took nine activities and nine links out, then it becomes a 20-piece activity with a 20-piece finish. So there's a few ways you can do it. Yes, uh, but the thing is they do have to gain all the ropes. Otherwise, it's no fun for the last stage. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if you had, say you had 22 people, you could give them all one rope. And then at the end, say there's seven extra ropes here. You guys decide who's going to have two parts. That's one way to do it. Or simply the last seven activities give everyone two ropes. Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and the, oh, the way master is about how quick do you assemble it again, like uh, like the normal webmaster, or is it now you have 20 minutes to assemble it once or no, exactly the same. Because what, what we're looking for is that big finish. So yeah. So they still it's still a 40 minute activity at the end, but everyone's included. Oh, okay. Sure. So Graham, my question is that the 29 activities themselves gives us, uh, I'm thinking about all the ways we can use it for growth mindset, for social styles, for emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, leadership. There's so much learning that we can get out of that. What does the webmaster, because after like two and a half hours of working, I'm just thinking of my groups and giving them another like 40 minute challenge. Sure. I might, I feel like I might get pushed back. What's the added on benefit of that overall? Is it just to get the whole team to work together on one thing? That That's the, the major principle. Yeah. So you've gone from working in lots of little sub teams, but no one's done everything all together to, you know, mm -hmm. building up to this common purpose. So you're we're really looking at the metaphor as going from sub-team to whole organization working. So the whole reason I'm stuck with doing this drawing when I don't want to do it is so I can earn this link and then I can make my mm. contribution at the end. Uh, but Webmaster as a standalone activity is largely about high performance teams. So you start mm -hmm. off building something uh, for the first time. It's different skills to figure out how that goes together to do it for the first time. And it usually takes groups about 20 minutes. And then the skills are required to build it in 20 minutes, to build it in two minutes, which is a target, is a different set of skills and usually different mm -hmm. set, of, set of people. And as I say, most groups tend to get there in the end and it's just, it's a nice finale because everyone's there together. But there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't just e exclude that and just do the 29 activities. The whole idea of this being a power tool is it's kind of up to you how, to, how to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's great. It get, like as a facilitator, there's so many different ways you can put it to put the, each of those activities into use. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and a lot of them are. I mean, I think about six of them are standalone activities that we that we have. And really, the the design came from people saying, "Yeah, I can stitch activities together, but you know, uh, have something that's got a bit of coherence, you know, and and uh, is is also works for that slightly larger group, you know, uh, particularly yeah. in class sizes, because I think class sizes from an educational context are usually probably bigger than our typical intact team size, which is often, you know, 12 to 15, 16 people. Classes are typically more 20 to 30 people, I guess, uh, or, or more mm -hmm. indeed, yeah. Okay, thanks, Ron. No problem, good. So I, I'm not gonna hold people back if you if you don't need to. Uh, Kim will send the, the links out to, to these. As I say, all of the materials are come with it. Whether you use them as we've described or whether you use them individually, you know, there are 30 pieces of kit there that you can you can use for whatever purposes. There's no additional license fees, no use fees. It's a, a single time uh, purchase. Uh, please get in touch if you do need anything else or if you've got any other questions. Uh, and thank you very much for, for joining.